has seen that love and dedication expressed in everything that they do. There is no community quite like the veterans community. Counselors, service officers, business people, public servants, advocates, nonprofit leaders. The veterans I have had the opportunity to know are hardwired to give back, to quietly serve and better their communities in a way that looks for no recognition and expects nothing in return. It's a continuation of a lifelong commitment to serving others. Though there are many people worth embarrassing, since I'm standing up here, I would be remiss if I didn't take a moment to single out Mike Whelan as one of these people. Mike, thank you for your lifelong dedication to this country, your fellow veterans, and the Hopkinton community. To all those who have served, your tenacity and selfless spirit, your agape, are things that the rest of us must continue to strive towards in our everyday lives, but particularly in the way that we repay, in whatever small way we can, all that you have sacrificed for us. Thank you for safeguarding us, both in our ideal form and our real one. Thank you for your service. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks, Liz, for that. To many veterans, our nation was important enough to endure long separation from their families, miss birthdays, holidays, live in harsh conditions, and even lose their lives. What is common throughout all generations of veterans is the absolute insistence that the gratitude shown them truly belongs to their fallen brothers and sisters who paid the ultimate sacrifice. Ironically, it is those who did give their lives never wore the title of veteran. Only survivors become veterans. Some died on foreign soil and gave up the chance to be fathers, mothers, and grandparents. They gave up everything for their country, and all we can do is remember. But just to remember seems inadequate. Hence, we created Veterans Day, a day which we can actively express our gratitude. Today's battles are not just with the enemies of our nation, but the enemies of all good people of the earth. This country's military is combating evil in every corner of the planet. Yes, evil or the devil, whatever you name you give it, must exist, is really the only explanation for the atrocities and crimes against humanity that we can all view in this modern era because of technology. History has shown us that isolationism and inaction to these inhuman offenses is, is a mistake. The leaders of our country should realize that with all our resources, we have a moral obligation to take up the mantle and defend all the innocent and just people of the earth against the misguided zealots. Okay. I believe that this country's young men and women are certainly ready to defend our way of life and the freedoms we enjoy as the generations came before them did. Remember, this nation will remain the land of the free as long as it is the home of the brave. 230 years ago, our founding fathers were composing our Constitution, and they wanted to create a living document. They were certainly visionaries, but they could not have imagined the current lifestyle in modern technology we have become accustomed to here in 2017. James Madison and the other contributors valued free speech above all rights. And consequently, the first change or first amendment to our constitution was the freedom to express and communicate ideas. I would not want to live or raise a family in a country that would, not, that would prohibit the right of free speech. Presently, there are those who cite this First Amendment as they are expressing dissatisfaction with our government by kneeling during the national anthem. Yes, it is perfectly legal to show disrespect. And many have given their lives to protect this and other rights our nation enjoys. Certainly, social injustice exists, and it needs to be, needs to be addressed and corrected. It seems that frustration with this issue has led some to call attention to this situation in hopes of resolving the problem. However, the path to change is shorter when positive steps are taken and respect is maintained. I say to those who use our flag, our Pledge of Allegiance, and our national anthem as props to call attention to themselves 
in their issues to hear this. Do not expect others to be sympathetic and respectful of your beliefs and concerns if you show disrespect to their values. Now moving along. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, every year um, we bury many Hopkins and veterans and, and those with, um, who worked in Hopkinton or have a connection. And uh, I just always take this time to review those um, veterans. Um, most of you will recognize these names. Uh, we have 24 this year. Uh, uh, we'll start off with uh, Wilbur Temple, Wilbur Spike Temple. Uh, some of you may remember him. He actually uh, passed away a little before last year's uh, Veterans Day, but I didn't get the word. But uh, he was a Vietnam veteran in the 101st Airborne Screaming Eagles. Uh, he died while working on his farm in New Mexico. He leaves his wife, his daughter, and some of you remember his uh, brother and sister, Harry and Wendy. Uh, Alan Pratt, United States Army. He uh, served 1956 to 1958. He worked as a lifeguard in the Army. Dr. John Duffy, 88 years old, United States Army. Some of you might have known he played the trumpet in the 5th Army Band. Longtime volunteer for several positions in the town of Hopkinton, and he was a dentist. He left 12 children, 45 grandchildren, and a grandchild. Respected by all, certainly Dr. Duffy. Louis Bisconi, 89 years old, United States Navy, Hopkinton business owner, animal lover, horse ra racing enthusiast. Gene Flannery, 84 years old, United States Marine Corps, longtime Hopkinton resident, decorated combat Marine in the Korean conflict. William Pine, 85 years old, graduate of Hopkinton High School, four years in the Army during the Korean conflict. Walter Bertrand, United States Air Force, Hopkins High School, 1967, worked at WPI for many years, a Vietnam veteran. Merrill Stratton, 86 years old, Hopkins in High School, 1949, he was in the Navy, he became an advocate for the veterans of the Korean War and was post commander over in Westboro for a number of years. Bill Peasley, 90 years old, United States Navy, neighbor of mine. Lifelong resident of Woodville, was in the Navy during World War II, stationed in the Philippines. He worked all his life in the building trades. William Gallerini, 1974 years old, high school Hopkins grad, United States Air Force. Mary O'Connell Mooney, uh, graduated from Hopkins in 1946, served in the Army, stationed in Germany and Washington, D.C. during the Korean War. John Beale, 81, United States Marine Corps, member of our post. He worked at the Framingham DPW. Richard Bertrand. Hopkins in High School, 1969, uh, United States Army, served in Germany for three years. Eugene Guarini, 80 years old, National Guard, worked at the phone company, was a 1955 graduate of Hopkins in High School. Emery Bill Hart, only 70 years old, United States Navy reserved. Some of you may remember he owned and operated Pizza Villa on Main Street for about 25 years. Ralph Edwards, 
92 years old, World War II vet. He worked in banking, longtime Post 202 member, very active throughout his working life and retirement. William Henry Robinson, 79 years old, U.S. Air Reserve. He was an artist, founder of Hopkins and Youth Soccer, and past president of the Kiwanis Club. John Bolson, lifelong Hopkinton resident, although he went to Marion, <laughs> Army veteran of the Vietnam War, and he worked in landscaping. Yeah. Uh, Bud Dussault, 81 years old. He was an uh, Army veteran, resided in Hopkins for many years. He was the owner operator of Bud's Taxi a few years back. Jim Warner, from Woodville, 76 years old. Army veteran from Vietnam, he worked for digital equipment. Paul Gleason, only 64 years old, United States Marine Corps. He lived in Westboro, but he was Hopkins tree warden and a well-respected man. Lewis Anderson, 91, United States Navy, served both Korea and World War II. He was a gunner's mate. And just a few weeks ago, Billy Carey, 73 years old, United States Army Tech Sergeant served in Vietnam, was a graduate about 1961, I'm guessing. He worked as a driver for local transportation companies. I have to stand by and listen to taps. Thank you.